Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I am super excited for this month's Boost My Build. If you're not familiar with this series, this is where we take your PC part picker list, tear them up, put them back together, and massively boost your PC performance. Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. And subscribe and click the bell icon. We're almost at 60,000 subscribers as I record this right now. With that, let's jump into it. Keybray. Hi, this builds for professional use, multitasking, mid gaming use. Don't know what mid gaming use is, but we'll figure that out. Don't know if 1660, I think that's, you mean GTX 1660 or 1660 Super or 1660 Ti would do or go for a RTX 3060 or even an RX 6600 XT. Thanks. All right, let's start off with the graphics card discussion because this is really, this is the big conundrum. The first thing is I would recommend you don't buy anything until you get a graphics card. Don't buy anything. The reason is, combo deals. Most GPUs are purchased through combo deals, but let's specifically talk about these. So you got a 1660 Super. The problem with 1660 Super is if you want that level of performance, then I would buy a pre-built. The reason is uh, regular human beings like you and I uh, don't have access to the pricing for a 1660 Super that the system integrators do. So you and I are gonna end up paying, like what's the going rate right now? Amazon, 1660 Super, $489, That it's outrageous. The reason is these are incredibly efficient mining GPUs. So right now GPUs are still priced at the mining value of them, not the gaming value of them. And to miners, remember these print money. This is the reason we're in a GPU crisis is not because suddenly there's five times as many gamers as there ever was. The real deal here is that there is a massive mining boom going on right now and miners are literally devouring all the cards and they're willing to pay way more than gamers for them. And that's why you see cards like a 1660 Super that's a 1080p card going for five, $489. While at the same time, you can go to Newegg like right now, this second, and you can go over, at least in the US and Canada, and you can buy a combo deal where you're getting the graphics card, a 6600 XT. Um, remember, it has the same performance, it's actually 10% more than the 5700 XT. You can get that for $499. So for $10 more, you get a card that kicks the snot out of the 1660 Super. So why, what's the difference? One is a much better mining card than the other. The other thing is that this comes with a motherboard. Miners don't want motherboards. They want to buy individual graphics cards and put six or more of them on a rig. So right now, the best things to get is honestly 6600 XT combo deals if you have access to them. In other markets, the 6600, because they're in stock and they're actually at a, what I would consider a reasonable, somewhat reasonable price for this market. If we jump over to the 3060 Ti, right? You're paying $800 at eBay. Yes, you can get them $500 through Newegg Shuffle if you're lucky. Honestly, you know, the difference in price is 300 bucks. How much is your time worth? These are the crazy calculations you have to get into. And for an RTX 3060, you're still talking about $685 over at eBay right now to get one. Now, the pricing on the TI and the regular 3060 cards doesn't make any sense to me right now. If you if you look at what it's being sold at for Newegg Shuffle, you just got to get lucky enough to get one. So, Let's go ahead though and say you're gonna get an RTX 3060 because you're doing this for work and you want some of the features, including the NVENC encoder and others. You didn't give me really a budget to work with here. Um, $971 in your current build, you didn't include the GPU. You've got a, a Ryzen 5 5600X, a, an air cooler, budget air cooler. You've got a relatively expensive uh, motherboard, which is the B550 carbon Wi-Fi. And then you've got, you know, some, uh, 16 gigs of memory, only 16 gigs of memory. If, if you do, want professional things, as soon as you hear the word professional in a build, 32 gigs, 32 gigs, 32 gigs. You can get away with 16 gigs on even Adobe Premiere and things like that. But especially since you're clearly getting a prosumer level drive in ADATA XPG SX8200 Pro, this is a good drive, but you could save 20 or 30 bucks here by going with a, a budget NVMe drive. And then you've got, uh, you know, your Cooler Master Master Box, very expensive case. You're missing a fan, by the way. You definitely want a, a, you need a fan in the rear of this case. What would I do here? Okay, well, you know, I've had some time to play around with the build. Here's, here's essentially what I would do. I would look at going up to a 5800X. You wanna do professional level work. The difference between the two processors is like $110. I think that is very much worth it for the 5800X. Um, you could probably stay with the, the the air cooler. I would probably go up to something like a Scythe Fuma 2. In fact, let's just do that real quick. For $15 more, get you plenty of cooling there. Yes, you lose the RGB. 
The motherboard, I, I just downsized it to the Asus Tough Gaming B550 plus Wi-Fi. I don't think you need, unless you're, you absolutely have to have the ALC1220 audio codec, there's no reason for it. I don't even think this case though offers a USB type C on the front panel. So, you know, you could, there's other cheaper, yeah, it does not. So you don't need, I, I don't think you need that, that motherboard at all. Uh, I, I would go with something cheaper here. I look at getting 32 gigs of memory. I just put in the cheapest 32 gig uh, kit that's 3200 CL16. I, I also think you need two terabytes of storage. So I dumped in two terabytes of storage and I've dumped in $700 for your RTX 3060. Now, again, you could go cheaper if you get a 6600 XT, but you know, we'll just stick with the 3060 here. The power supply, you know, 650 is fine. And then I added in a fan. So overall, this is gonna get you more performance. It's gonna give you some more CPU horsepower. It's gonna get you some more memory to, to be able to scale in the future. And it's gonna give you more storage. So overall, in terms of gaming, this is gonna give you the same gaming performance as the 5600X and, and all that stuff, but it's gonna give you more professional work horsepower. And that's all for just under $2,000, which is about what you should think about spending in this market right now. All right, we've got App Awe. App, you you wrote a book here, so I'm just gonna summarize. This is a huge budget. They Their budget is 3,500 up to $5,000. So this is gonna be one of those almost no, uh, budget is no object. So they like to play Planet Coaster, which I know can get uh, pretty CPU intensive. Sims 3, that's not a hard, hard to play game. They've got tons of games on disc, so they want an optical drive. Wow, it's like 1999 all over again. They want to do mod, photo editing, music production, custom content creation, writing documents, storing music from all kinds of laptops and phones, save stuff. They're just really confused about what parts to get. So they've gone kind of max everything. And let's just take a look at this build. So, wow, this is like, look at this parts list. We're already at $4,100 uh, and you wanted to stick to 3,000. Okay, so let's let's just very briefly go. We've got a, a 5900X with an Octua uh, D15S, fine. Uh, ASRock B550 Tai Chi, wow, it's just an expensive B550. DDR4 3600 CL14, yikes, that's some expensive memory there. And we've got, essentially, we've got 32 gigs of it, uh, four by eight. That is good so we can get the, the dual rank with four by eight. You've got a uh, Kingston 500 gigabyte NVMe, and then you've got two Samsung 870 SATA drives, uh, two terabyte ones, large. Those are actually some of the cheapest uh, SSD storage you can get right now if you're just looking for kind of bulk storage. You want an RTX 3080 and you have $1,800 in here. That's actually more than you need. You can get them on eBay right now for I believe about $1,500 all told. And then we've got this funky chicken case that I, I, I've i never even seen before. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe you like the aesthetic of it. To me, I'm just, I hate everything about this case. It looks constraining. This is like an EATX case or something. Yeah, I just gotta tell you, I know it looks all fancy and everything inside. It feels like we're building this whole build around all this massive storage and the desire to have an optical drive. Like we can get, I don't know, you can get an external optical drive that just plugs into a USB. I feel like this build is very confused. We've got thousand watt power supply. Well, probably that's what we're gonna need. A zillion fans. We got fans up the wazoo. Okay, you got a monitor in here. You've got nice keyboard, a nice mouse, um, and then you've got some speakers. Wow. Okay, let's let's just we're not going to jump immediately into this build. We need to have we need to have a talk. Okay, let's breathe. So sometimes, oftentimes, I would say you end up with the problem of not enough budget to cover everything that you wanna do and you have to go back to the drawing board and really hone in on what is it I want out of this build. Then once you've kind of recentered yourself, then you go back and you start cutting some things until you get to where you wanna be. People don't realize this, but having too much budget can also be a problem because you end up with this everything and the kitchen sink build that really, rather than going back and kind of rethinking the goals of this build, uh, to streamline it, all we've done is we just keep throwing money at the problem and we just keep buying more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And we end up with this really confused, noth nothing's technically wrong with this build. Nothing is technically wrong with it. I, I, I don't wanna, I'm not bashing, all these components would work together. All I'm saying is that we're just kind of bleeding money everywhere 
and I feel like not really getting much closer to our ultimate objectives. So I'm actually, this. there's so much work that needs to be done on this one. We're just gonna do some movie magic here and I'm gonna flip over to uh, the completed build. Okay, here we are on the completed build. Now, what did I do? I basically took us back to, um, we wanna do all this content creation. We, so we're gonna need some memory. We're gonna need a processor that can handle that. Uh, and we're gonna need enough storage, but let's not go crazy. And we're not gonna build our build around having an optical drive, an internal optical drive. We're gonna build our build around having an external optical drive. You can get them on, on Amazon for crying out loud for $22. And you just plug this thing in whenever you need to use it. You just plug it into the front panel if you want. Again, this solves a lot of our problems by just going to something as simple as this. And if this thing breaks, you don't have to pull it out. You don't have to do anything. You just buy another one and plug that one in instead for 22 bucks. All right, so let's go through. First of all, I, I went ahead and put in $1,500 for the graphics card because that's the going eBay price right now for an RTX 3080. You can get a EVGA for the Win 3 card for that. So that's what we're gonna stick with that. Uh, but we downsize the processor. You don't need a 5900X just to do some music processing. 5800X, I think, is where we wanna be. It's a good price now that they've cut the price by 50 bucks. We've gone, I know you said you're afraid of uh, water coolers. I would typically like to go with like a 240 or 280 millimeter water cooler. But absent that, the Scythe Fuma 2 is a phenomenal uh, budget cooler for $59, it even competes with the high-end coolers. Because the case we're gonna go with, which is the course, I went I went with black, it seemed like you like black. Uh, this is the case that you can actually get a lot of storage into in the future. That's the Corsair 4000D. And uh, clearly you like the black aesthetic with that kind of darker tint. So that's what we went with here. You do need a couple extra fans to, to run it. So I got you a five pack of Arctic P14. These are 140 millimeter fans. The, the reason I like these PST fans is that, that you can daisy chain them together rather than needing a controller. You can just daisy chain them all together. Now I wouldn't daisy chain all of them together, but you could daisy chain like three of them together. Certainly uh, just makes for simpler building. We did keep your power supply because you're gonna need a thousand Watts, but we definitely went down on the processor. I got you um, the B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. This has a front panel USB Type-C. It's got the best audio uh, ALC 1220 codec on it. It comes loaded with features. You're really gonna like it. And we went ahead and got four by eight of uh, DDR4 3600 CL16 memory. I bumped you up to a one terabyte boot drive, and then I kept one of your uh, SATA SSDs. My thought here is that just get two terabytes, uh, three terabytes total, right? One boot, one terabyte on the boot drive, two terabytes on the on the SATA drive and see where you're at. And then if you need another one, go buy another one later and install it. But this is, I think, just a much more streamlined build that's really gonna pull everything together without having to get into all these kind of crazy parts and, and cable management up the wazoo. This is gonna streamline everything you're looking to do. And for something like Planet Coaster, this is gonna crush any of the games that you listed. Planet Coaster, even very complex parts. And we hit a $3,000 budget with this. So we came down $1,100 and accomplished pretty much all the objectives you set out with. Now we got Zams. Zams is a friend of the channel here. Zams, you're looking for 1080p, 144 hertz gaming. Uh, they resubmitted because they forgot to make some uh, subscribe publicly visible. It's, uh, that's fine. Here's a list of PCs. Uh, their budget's $1,500 USD. They want to use it for school needs and play games like uh, Minecraft, Valorant, uh, Forza Horizon. The good news is that those games will play pretty much on a toaster. Let's see what you got. You've got the Ryzen 5 3600 for $235. Eh. You've got the B550 MDS3H. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that motherboard. Memory, you've got uh, 3600 CL16, even though, yeah, okay. Uh, you've got four terabytes of hard drive storage for $152, and only 500 gigabytes of SSD storage for $54. And then you wanna get a 3060 Ti, uh, and you want a Corsair 4000D, which is kind of an expensive, that's, that's rough. What are we at here? So you wanted to spend 1500. Well, yeah, you also, I think you're missing a power supply. That's what we're missing here. What would I change in here? Here's where, I, here's where I came to on your build. So first of all, I think we want to go with a, an RX 6600 XT combo. 
And I say that because for the same price that you can get an RTX 3060 Ti, which is like, uh, here we are at eBay, they're about $800, $820 for a decent one. A Zotac one's like 800 bucks, something, you know, like an EVGA one uh, is like 1320 with shipping. You, look, the performance is gonna be slightly better than the 6600 XT. However, you know, you've got a pretty tight budget Instead, we could simply go with a combo at Newegg. Again, links down in the description. Check it out. I, I can't, I feel like I want to scream this from the, from the rooftop. These have just been sitting here in stock. And I just cannot believe that they're not selling out. I mean, maybe I'm, we're just so conditioned for a GPU shortage. Maybe we're coming to a point where the GPU shortage is starting to reverse, which would be good. So I put in the one with the uh, 6600 XT. I don't remember which one. I think it was Asus. Now, PC Part Picker doesn't have most of the 6600 XT cards in here. So I just put in the ASRock uh, one in there as a placeholder for the power. And then, of course, we got the Mag B550 Tomahawk. So all told, that was like, it's like $700. $700. Now, there's some cheaper combos that have just popped up. You could go instead with an Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus. That would be great. I went with the Cooler Master Hyper 212, um, went with some relatively cheap Team Force Delta RGB 6, uh, 2 by 8 gigabyte. This is DDR4 3200 CL16. With this graphics card, you are not going to see the benefits of 3600 CL16. I don't, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you know, just again, we're trying to hit that $1,500 mark. I went with uh, two terabytes of Team MP33. It's an NVMe drive. This is one of the cheaper M.2 uh, drives, especially at the two terabyte range. And it's a very good drive. So it's one I would definitely recommend. Yeah, I like the Fantex P400A. It's a uh, ARGB. You know, we ended up with a little bit of extra money here. So if you really wanted to, I think you probably could have gone with a 3060 Ti, uh, but you probably would have had them come up with the money for, you know, you have about 140 left. You know, you have to kind of cheap out on your motherboard if you do that. I think overall this build with a 5600X, a budget air cooler, a solid B550 motherboard, nice looking RGB memory, uh, two terabytes of SSD storage for all of your games and everything else you need. I gave you three, one of these up here, um, three ARGB 120 millimeter fan packs. It has a controller in it too, along with the Fantex and appropriately sized PSU. I think overall, this is just, this is really gonna get it done for $1,363. Here you go. Thank you for joining us in this month's Boost My Build. I really hope you enjoyed this part one of two. So of course, click that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you get notified when it goes live. And of course, if you got value of this video, give it a big like, it really helps out the channel. We're almost at 60,000 subscribers right now as I record this. So I will catch you on episode two coming up on the next one. Come, 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 come on.